Go. Sure. All right, thanks. This thing, the strongest one they produced. Oh, come on. <clears throat> there we go. All right. Fantastic. I love it. Well, welcome everybody to the quarterly uh, IT all staff meeting. I got to tell you, I love being in San Luis Obispo, or as I'm told, slow, right, for locals. I'm also told I can't claim that until I've been here a few months. But really, uh, can you think of a better location, right, than San Luis Obispo? It's one of my favorite places to come down in. So I think we're going to start looking at quarterlies every quarter here at San Luis. So <laughs> there's, there's a couple microbreweries I hadn't hit yet. So, you know, we may turn this into a quarterly monthly thing. I don't, I don't know. We'll figure that out. But I really do appreciate everybody's hospitality in San Luis Obispo. And this is really an important thing for us to communicate with all the IT staff. So we've got an exciting agenda for you. I think we've got a lot of updates. And being that this is the first quarterly, some of the things we're going to be talking about include right, what we've done over the last calendar year. So you're going to see all the IT division chiefs come up and, and talk about some of the accomplishments and also touch on some of the topics that we've got coming for this, uh, the rest of this calendar year and, and the rest of this fiscal year. But you know, by all means, ask questions. I, we've already got some questions ahead of time. And uh, we're also taking questions throughout this. So I think we've got the Ask George email line uh, fired up and running. Um, so ask away anytime you got. But I want to introduce kind of a, a very key uh, sponsor and stakeholder for us, especially here in, in D5, and that's, uh, that's Tim Gubbins. <laughs> All right, Tim. Hey, you know, to say this. Thank you so much. You know, I'm actually worried about this a little bit because you're like one of the wittiest uh, district directors I've met, I gotta tell you, I, I feel like I'm two steps behind. <laughs> <laughs> see, see, you proved me right, so I, I love that, because okay. I'm very rarely right. But anyway, um, you know, from what I've observed, you're one of the, uh, the wittiest IT district directors. I, I'm sorry, one of the wittiest district directors oh, okay. I subordinated you there. So I'm gonna use that for Melissa later. Okay. And the other thing, you know, I've, I've come to realize you've actually been in the district a long time. I have, um, well, as I think you know, you know we have we have a wonderful area here. Yep. When, it, when it's not raining like it has been this yeah. month, um, wonderful area here. I was lucky enough to kind of stumble into this Ooh. district as a new hire out of college. Wow. Uh, that was a little over 29 years ago. Fantastic. So, <laughs> so 29 years just 20, here. 20, yeah, I've had a couple a couple stints in Sacramento, okay. one over in Fresno. You know, just to okay. let me appreciate District Five a little more. Cool. Um, <laughs> but yeah, yeah, it's Sacramento is a good place to be. Fantastic. Yeah. And you're also up, up from, oh nice. That's <laughs> All right, well I'm gonna wait till we get to Sacramento, then we'll okay. talk about San Luis, but uh, you're also kind of a technologist. You know, when we were visiting yesterday, I, I saw there was no desktop printer. I didn't even see a laptop or a desktop. And, uh, um, yeah, I do, well you may have noticed at, at my desk I have a, uh, a, I have a monitor that just, yep. I have the nice little uh, desk thing that can move up and down so I can mm -hmm. do the standing workstation in like cool. two seconds and stuff, that's yeah. really good. But I haven't used a desktop printer myself, I think, in about 10 years. Wow. It's just, you know, it's hassle with the inkjet. Mm -hmm. It's not the quality. And so it's just, I just sent it to a central central printer. It's okay. right outside my office. Um, I have an old-fashioned old security mode on it. You know, yeah. it, since it's about 30 feet away from yeah. my office, I just yell, nobody pick that up. <laughs> <laughs> and then, I, then I, walk over, I walk over and grab it. It works. But, uh, yeah, yeah, no, it just... It, it makes more sense to me, uh, centralize it, things like that. I mean, it's more cost efficient, all that kind of stuff. Less, less hassle to keep, you know, however Perfect. many thousands of kind of cartridges we need, cheaper, all that. But I, I know, we've yeah. got like 9,000 desktop printers, yeah. right? So that's something we're gonna be looking at in, in future months, yeah. right? How, how do we better yeah. rationalize those? Right. But also yeah. we talked about Surface Pro. Yeah, and I, I was really excited, I was telling uh, George yesterday as he was here, um, I got a Surface Pro, a new, a new Surface Pro 4, uh, arrived a little while ago, got what? it Friday. So wow. yesterday I took it out on my f first field trip. I went up to uh, a TAMSI meeting, which is the Transportation Agency of Monterey mm -hmm. County. I sit on a number of boards with our regional yeah. partners. And so instead of printing out their big PDF package of cool. an inch of paper where I only need probably 10 sheets of it, I just went ahead, brought my Surface Pro with me. <coughs> had that so I had their online uh, PDF keep along with it so I didn't have to do that printing and more importantly we've been having enough uh, action in the district I could keep up with my public affairs uh, press notices and uh, I was able when I gave an update on what was happening on route one I was saying okay well this is new as of about 20 minutes ago wow. and this was an hour and a half into the meeting so it's just it's, it's great I, I like doing stuff like that uh, you know I'm 
I consider myself a knowledgeable in, in tech, but I don't really consider myself a high high end user. As I said, you know, oh. I do email with it. You know, just other people produce things, and I just need to view them. Yeah, I totally get it. You know, you talked about a lot of action, right? Because with with the winter storms, I mean, it's been huge this year. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so what's been going on here in D five? Okay, I um, I think we might have some pictures, so I don't want to stand in the way if they come up. But basically, uh, since 2017 started, we've had we've had more rain days than not. Um, up on up on this picture that's behind me, up on Highway One in the Big Sur area, this is called Pfeiffer Canyon. We actually had uh, a uh, homeless person notify us that he saw some cracks under one of our bridges. They weren't that big yet. It was just we started seeing some cracks, started seeing a column. What happened is that whole area is a landslide underneath it. So this column started pulling away from the bridge. You see the cracks there. Then the bridge is going down. We had to restrict traffic on it. We got some emergency vehicles to be able to use it. And then this last week, this happened. This used to be a nice, flat, smooth bridge. It now has that little wow in it. We cannot allow anybody over that. It's moving. The bridge is moving. The columns are moving. The abutments are moving. We just, we're very, we're very scared of that. And that's at about post mile 45 or Pfeiffer Canyon. And I'm going to start using nicknames here in a minute. <laughs> then further down the road, in the next 60 miles that are uh -huh. still in there, we get we get situations like this where some of the roads slipped away, and that actually looks fairly minor some, compared to some of the really? things we're looking at. Wow. Um, you know. A, we, we have mud at, at Mud Creek. We have mudslides. <laughs> <laughs> we have mudslides going across. How, the, how appropriate! Going across the road. We have trees down. You can see it's not really passable for cars, things like that. But we also have a lot of debris, rocks, mud. This type of slide. This is near Lime Kiln, huh. Lime Kiln Creek, which is just south of Paul Slide, which you know is, is near Grandpa's Elbow, which is, you know, <laughs> a couple miles south of Cow Cliff. I've really, I keep, I keep a map on my desk now mm -hmm. of the Big Sur area because okay. about every mile there's a nickname location. And when we're communicating with our locals, uh -huh. they refer to them as that. They're like, oh yeah, well is that at Paul's or is that up at, up at Pfeiffer's or mm -hmm. you know, where exactly are you? And so we get things like that. You can see these rocks, that's almost a lane width. So that's about 10 feet wide. Amazing. Rocks that big are kind of hard to pick up and load onto trucks. Somebody might say, oh easy, just get here and start pushing over. The nice ocean you see there mm -hmm. is a national marine sanctuary. We cannot right. have man-made efforts, if you will. Nothing mm -hmm. that we touch, we can't throw over there. And so we're mm -hmm. trucking most things off. When rocks get that size, and actually we've had some two or three so times that size, we're out there blasting. Fantastic. And which again, is hard to do in the rain. And we've had oh, more oh, rain yeah, days. Yeah, yeah. And so unfortunately, we have about 60 miles landlocked right now. Uh, we're hoping as of tomorrow, we might be able to, in areas like this, clear almost a lane and let some emergency vehicles through, maybe let residents out that need to evacuate. If possible, if we can get a whole lane open, <laughs> we might be able to let people bring supplies in and go back. Those are the kind of things I have geotech engineers, construction engineers, maintenance forces, I think five different contractors. It's been keeping us a little busy. I bet, are there a lot of folks that are landlocked back there? Um, yeah, at different, and again, there's different areas. Uh, right now, the grand total mm -hmm. we think is about four to five hundred people wow, that's a lot. that have not been able to get out in a couple of weeks. Got it. Yeah. Amazing. Well certainly it just, you know, goes to say how important it is, right, for to keep transportation moving. It is. You can okay, here's here's another one. You can you can see the size of some of these rocks. This yeah. we can get to them from one side, we can't get to them from another. When we when we went up to clear this, once we knew what we were gonna do, we couldn't get to this one because overnight two more slides had had blocked vehicles. And so it's it's a very dynamic it's very hard to keep information mm -hmm. flowing. That's why we really love the, the ability that we have. You know, areas like this historically haven't even had cell phone access. And so we've been able to, and we're looking forward to even more, kind of getting some repeaters and some other high tech stuff you guys tell me about. <laughs> to, to maybe it's an extender, I'm not sure. But extend, extend yeah. those cell phone coverages. You know, and yeah. so we can cover, you know, our crews can actually report in, we can get the information, yep. and we can give direction if we find out stuff that happened just mm -hmm. two miles south of them. Yeah, I think we're very excited about that. The IT staff and D5 are really doing some innovative stuff around Get communication. So. Oh, wow, that's your phone? Yeah. yeah. IT. All right. Nice grab. <laughs> it's activated. Cool. Thank you. So, again, your IT folk here are very responsive. <laughs> Wow, oh, that's a challenge to all the district. I gotta tell you, man, I haven't seen responsiveness like that. That's awesome. <laughs> so, yeah.
I'm so anyway, yeah, so we've been very busy here. We love to have you guys come down, right. share. You know, you get to know a little of what we deal with on a day-to-day -day basis, but you also get to see, you know, your IT yeah. guys in action, yep. how, they, how they're actually helping us, they support us, you know. And awesome. uh, so anything I can do for you guys, I know. For those of you watching at home, you know, <laughs> if, if there's anything that I can, I can help with or carry well, a message to a larger board, let me know. I really appreciate it. You've been a great partner for us, and I, I really thank you for allowing us to come into your district and, you know, and, and share and communicate. I, got, I was able to sit in a meeting with you and the IT staff yesterday, and just the openness and the candor, it really says a lot about what you've built here. Great. So thank you. Thanks. I appreciate thanks, it. Thanks, George. All right. All right. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. All right. And now, actually, I want to introduce uh, Melissa Hayworth, not of the Hayworth uh, <laughs> I, I guess cubicle fame, right? No, but unfortunately. The local <laughs> IT district manager. Have a seat. Let's have a chat. Thank you. You know, I always have to have a couch here because I'm old and I need to sit down every now and then. So this is more comfortable for me. Absolutely. So can you tell us a, a little bit about yourself? When we were talking earlier, it sounds like uh, you also, like myself, have been at a lot of different departments. I have. So. I have. I started my state career uh, with the Department of Mental Health back in 1988. Um, for a couple years, I did the site tech thing, um, found that that wasn't my cup of tea, so yep. I moved on a few times. I dispatched for hospital police and eventually ended up at uh, the Department of Corrections and Corrections. wore a uniform for about 10 years. So you've got the health and safety retirement? I do. I'm so envious. That's 3% at 50? Yeah, 10 times 3 is 30 years. Wow. Yeah, isn't that great? I love it. That's cool. Yeah. And then uh, after CCR. And then from there, I realized that doing that job ne wasn't necessarily uh, what I wanted to, it wasn't my end all be all. So I went back to school and, and migrated over to the IT side, um, working for parole operations, um, kind of doing a field job like some of my staff do, oh. supporting uh, parole offices up and down the coast um, as an assistant ISA, then an associate ISA. Uh, and from there, I got into supervising yeah. with the um, receivership for California oh. Correctional Health Care Services and um, worked in that position for about seven or eight years. That was a big effort. So that, was that court mandated that the health care was, was going to leave CDCR and, and yes. create a new organization? It was. It, it was uh, kicked off by an, a, a lawsuit by an inmate mm -hmm. who, or two or three, mm -hmm. who decided that they weren't getting the proper health care. Mm -hmm. And so... Uh, a three-panel judge said, okay, we're going to move health care underneath the receiver and uh, mandate that you do all of these things to provide constitutional level health care. And that was Clark Kelso? Clark Kelso. Interesting, because mm -hmm. Clark was also uh, the state CIO at one point in time, and I think right. he's still teaching at McGeorge. Oh, really? Yeah, so he's got a varied uh, uh, career, and he's, I think he's been the state insurance commissioner. or He's kind of known as a fix-it guy. Yeah, he's so. doing a great job um, yeah. with the receivership. I know that they just went to an electronic health record okay. uh, just after my departure, and um, so things are moving along there. Awesome. Sounds like a very storied career. Uh, the other thing that we <coughs> talked about, you're actually a, a car person, too, which is near and dear to my heart. You have a bit of a gearhead. So what, if, what have you owned? Um, I have. I, I've always been somewhat of a gearhead. I like fixing things oh. um, that are broken. Um, I uh, historically was very into air-cooled Volkswagens, and so okay. I restored a 65 Volkswagen Bug uh, to complete to completion. Um, it was about three quarters of the way through on a 67 Carmen Ghia and wow. didn't quite finish that one, unfortunately. Oh. Um, so, but yeah, I, I like to work on cars. Nice. And you, uh, you've got a V8 Suburban now? Yeah? I do, oh, and was. I've done a little wrenching on that lately. and. Um, cool. Does it have a giant lift kit or anything? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> no, then my little kids couldn't get in. Okay. Well, speaking of little kids, that's mm -hmm. something you also started recently, right? You've got two little ones now? It's true. It's true. We adopted um, two uh, children back in August, mm -hmm. and uh, Graceland is now 16 months old. Dylan is three. Wow. So... You look like you're sleeping. You're doing okay. And then, you know, sometimes that can be tough. <laughs> or you just really caffeinated. This is like one or the other. Yeah, maybe a little bit of both. Um, right. Things have been better the last couple of days, but we still wake up quite a few uh, times a night, unfortunately. But it's 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 all worth it. They're it, amazing children. It is worth it. You know, in addition to uh, your family at home, you've got a great family here. I, I, I talked do. about it. 
you know, is, is there anything you can share about your family here? I heard you guys have done a little something interesting. Yes, I could talk all day long about how great they are, but let's uh, go ahead and show you a video. All right, We've perfect. got something to I haven't seen you. this yet. I'm very excited. This series presents information based in part on theory and conjecture. I'm here in District 5 looking for the elusive D5 IT employee. There appears to be seven of them. They work together but travel alone or in small groups. They support a region of over 750 customers. They've been known to resolve issues from VTC, desktop, and server support. Always professional, but unwavering in their commitment, but very elusive. Join me in my search for the elusive D5 IT employee. I see him around different places here because I walk through the whole building. I deliver stuff. I've talked to them. They come out when I call and I need to have something picked up. Like sometimes I have laptops come in, several of them are, you know, desktops. I call them. I contact their boss. She gets hold of them. They come in, pick them up. We have a good rapport. The guy's all really nice, willing to help, and everything goes really smooth. I see them all the time in the EOC because we have to update the computers and put new passwords on them every quarter. And um, there always seems to be a problem every time that we do that. So Ben and Jeff and John are always there to help. Um, anytime we put in a ticket or give them a call, they're uh, super friendly and they're always happy to come in and help us out. We're here in the District 5 server room looking for the elusive IT employee. I see by this pile of cut wires that they must be near. Still fresh. Yeah, I see D5 IT all the time. They're on my speed dial, so whenever I need to call them, they're there in a split second, so, and, I, and I love that about them. Uh, so that's the, that's the great quality service that we get here in District 5 that I don't think any other district has it and I'm so happy that we have that here. We've come upon this area where the IT staff seem to meet. I'm going to install this surveillance camera in the hopes of catching them in their natural habitat. This whole area reeks of fresh cut wire. Actually, I love it when I see D5IT because I know that they're going to provide me excellent service. D5IT is a one-of-a-kind department. I have worked in District 5 IT itself many years ago. Um, they aim to please. They, they come with a smile on their face and are always willing to help us with every little issue that we have at out in maintenance support and we have many <laughs> well it looks like the district 5 it will continue to be a mystery their contribution undeniable their professionalism unsurpassed and their technical expertise unparalleled d5 it you made a believer out of me That was fantastic. So I, I really appreciate the effort everybody went to that. You know, I, I got to tell you, I've been very impressed with uh, camaraderie and the and the D5 team. And and uh, as I mentioned with Tim, you know, I I really appreciate the transparency and candor. So uh, keep up the great tradition here. You know, in D5 IT. Thank you. Thank you. All right, and I'm, during this segment, we're going to talk a little bit about updates, not only for myself, but also updates uh, from all the division chiefs. But I want to get it started. You know, for me, as I look back on 2016, you know, although we can talk about uh, really endless things, because I got to tell you, since I've come here, everybody's done such a fantastic job. Uh, but there's four things I want to highlight uh, a little bit more. Right, one of them is the IT strategic focus, if you will. You guys remember last time? 
when we were in Marysville, we had the pyramid chart, right? And it, it talked about transformative activities, it talked about efficiency activities, and it talked about stability activities. We've kind of used that as an anchor, right, to kind of guide us on where we're going to go. You know, that document also talked about some of our operating practices, you know, the one IT, the business focus, collaboration. And uh, the one that I love the most is the achievement orientation. Uh, so that, right, is it's a little short of a strategic plan. I think we're going to be looking at doing a strategic plan in the next fiscal year. But at least for this year and until we get the full-blown IT strategic plan developed, that focus document serves as our guiding light, if you will. And after that, I also want to talk about the CIO communications. And this is a big part of it. I got to tell you, and, and a lot of work goes into these. You know, you know I, the team here, actually, at Ending Company, they got here Monday, right, which, which was a holiday just to make sure that this goes off well. But it's so important to me and the executives to have an opportunity, right, to engage the districts as we come out here and also have an opportunity to share what's going on at a high level. You know, I'm going to pitch again that Ask George line is, is open. So, you know, if you have any questions, email them. And uh, if we can't get to them here, we'll get to them online on a website uh, under IT. So, but the communication cadence is very important. You know, these are quarterly. Every month we have a meeting with all the IT uh, soups and managers. Uh, every week I put the division chiefs through a couple of meetings and that hopefully, right, helps us stay on the same page and move in the same direction, right? And I always say when you get more folks involved, right, you get a little more thoughtful decision making happening there. The next topic is uh, IT asset management and that's really something we're going to see going forward uh, and not so much in, in the past. We've been asked to look at our IT assets right, much more closely. Uh, certainly, uh, Mike worked on the hardware uh, BCP, you know, and Tracy's actually now looking at uh, our applications and what do we have, right? What, what's the state of all our hardware that triggered the BCP? Uh, again, Stacy's looking at all, Stacy, Tracy's, I don't know. Stacy, Tracy, you change your name all the time. I don't know. <laughs> it's, it's, it's Geisler now, I'm gonna wait till next month. Um, but, but, but looking at all, looking at all the applications that we have, um, and also the next push is going to be looking at the software, right? So how many Adobe Pro licenses do we have? And there's continues to be focus on our cell phones. So coming into the next year, you're probably going to see a lot of focus around, you know, who's got what software, not only for us, but in the program areas. You know, what's our cell phone count? Do we have them in the right places? Um, you know, of course, printer rationalization is coming. So there's a, a bigger focus that's been asked of the IT department around what our hardware assets, hardware software assets are, and, and how can we manage them as effectively as possible. The last thing I have on there is uh, certainly we've had some significant hires. We hired a new CTO, Mike Wynn, and a new ISO, Carl Copper. So, you know, we're filling in the leadership team. We actually have uh, one more that I think we'll be going out for very shortly, and that's on the, the CSD uh, division chief. But with that, I actually want to introduce Carl. And Carl, since you're here, you know, can you sign this book for me? Because I understand you had something to do with it. Sure. You want me to address it to your wife? <laughs> you know, she reads it all the time. You know, in fact, my 13-year-old is riveted by it. So it's, it's between that and the iPhone. He goes to the book all the time. <laughs> But in all seriousness, the, this is a book that you've authored. It's a book I wrote, yep. Wow, how long did that take? It took about three years to write that, and one year with the publisher uh, helping edit it. And how did you ever get the, the desire, you know, find the time to write a book like this? Well, it was really hard at the time to build uh, highly available, secure mm -hmm. Linux clustering systems, okay. and I just had the thought, uh, somebody should write a book about that. All right. So I did. Fantastic. Do you see other books in your future? Or? Uh, that's the last one my wife will let me write. All right. <laughs> <laughs> well, we want to keep the peace at home. That's, that's certainly <laughs> important. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself other than uh, on the book? You know, uh, where have you been? What have you done? Anything you think the folks might be interested in? Uh, yeah, so I have a, a wide, varied background in both public and private. Uh, I've been involved in the um, publishing industry, uh, Newswire Services back in the day. Um, also shipping and logistics and health and most recently finance. Um, you know, when you say shipping and logistics, there's some new laws that got passed this year and I think shipping and logistics may be important to like uh, D1, D2, Humboldt County, you know, and all, and all that stuff was... <laughs> I wasn't was involved in that side right, of the right, business. Just, I'm just checking. All right, all right, just checking. All right. It was natural foods, but... Uh, <laughs> but it was all natural, right? Yeah. yeah. 
Uh, so I've, and I've been in shops uh, in both public and private, uh, small shops uh, where I've been the, you know, sort of the one-man band oh. and uh, have, have to fight off cyber attacks by myself without any support contracts. So when you uh, get, get them off your network and then they turn around and try to do a denial of service attack <coughs> on you, uh, that can be a lot of fun when you're trying to do it by yourself. And big shops, working in big shops uh, in, in finance and CalPERS where uh, you have the investment office calling you saying, uh, downtime is costing us millions of dollars per second uh, and affecting trades and those are those are also really exciting times. Yeah, the Cowper's uh, investment group, they're some of the highest paid folks we have in the state and yeah, and every second you hear, oh boy, I'm, I'm not able to execute a trade, I'm losing millions of dollars, that's got to be stressful. Down, you, downtime's exciting, yep. Did you have anything there uh, where they had significant downtime or that you had to remediate? Uh, well, it's always the ones where you're up at 2 o'clock in the morning, I think, that you remember the most. Uh, and when you can't get the, the uh, storage uh, system back up and online and uh, uh, serving as the incident manager, to use a little ITIL uh, lingo, oh, nice. uh, you can't get the system back going and you're starting to ask people to look at backups and see if we can recover to another storage array. And you're watching the clock tick by and you're realizing that people, about 3,000 people are going to come in and log in. Uh, at 8 o'clock and you still don't have the array up. So it ended up with people uh, in cubicles speaking uh, Japanese to Hitachi data systems in Japan uh, before we had to make the, the tough call to go in and actually hit the switch and hope for no data loss. Those are, those are fun. Amazing. Well, hopefully you won't have that kind of fun here. <coughs> hoping, uh, <laughs> uh, hoping not. You yes. never know. Though. You never know in your role. I totally agree. You know, and you've only been here since around Thanksgiving, yet I think you've actually uh, already accomplished quite a few things since that time. Yeah, yeah, I think we have a slide for that. So, uh, so a little bit of a 90-day uh, update. So the, the uh, first thing I'll talk about, first bullet on here, is the BCP and grant funding. And what preceded me before I got here was a really excellent work by uh, both my office, uh, Robert Traversi, uh, under George's leadership and uh, the team, the executive team worked to put together uh, uh, the budget change proposal, proposal to augment security ongoing. And this is really a really fantastic news to walk into an environment where we're going to have that kind of an augmentation to help us out. We're on the, to use uh, George's analogy, I think we're on the two yard line. We're, we're not yet in the end zone, but we're, we're really, really close. Um, and then there's a grant opportunity. Cal uh, California Office of Emergency Services has about 60 million up for grabs for cybersecurity each year. And we're going after some of that funding too to help uh, with the issues, uh, opportunities we have here at Caltrans in a variety of areas. And that's, that's one thing interesting uh, and unique in my experience uh, coming to Caltrans is every time we have to solve a desktop or endpoint problem, when you have 20,000 plus endpoints, it's a $750,000 problem to fix. So usually, uh, you know, we talk about people process technology, uh, but uh, you've got to add money to that list. And uh, it's, it's great to have that coming. We made some new hires. Uh, hired a triple S3 tech. We've got an offer in for a triple S2 who's a, he's accepted. We'll start next month. And a triple S1 that we're working, hopefully get on board real soon too, in the ISO office in Sacramento. Uh, we did an incident response tabletop. Uh, one of the first things uh, I wanted to do when coming here when uh, I noticed that uh, we didn't have a mature incident response, cybersecurity incident response program or plan was to put something together, engage with the business. We had uh, public affairs, legal, uh, legislative affairs, and uh, representation from all the areas of the business uh, legal that we could get in the room at one time. And just walk through, not a traditional tabletop where you try to exercise your program, but a uh, more of a workshop tabletop around cybersecurity incident response. Everyone was extremely engaged. We got a lot of feedback. We identified some gaps. And it's not a one and done. We'll be coming back around and we need to get district uh, involvement, of course, as we mature that program up. And last time at the All Staff, uh, I heard there was a question around endpoint protection and antivirus software. So if you're out there, whoever asked the question, this is for you. Uh, we have about, as I mentioned, uh, of course, around 20,000 endpoints. And uh, the question was uh, I, something to the effect of when are we going to get antivirus software? And this is after I had accepted the job. <laughs> <laughs> so Time is everything, Carl. I <laughs> <laughs> so I was a little shocked to hear that question. Uh, truth is, we do have antivirus software, and we have uh, McAfee rolled out to all of the endpoints, essentially all of the endpoints. I'm happy to report there's something called Rogue 
uh, system detection that's telling us uh, what's uh, coming on the network that it doesn't have the software installed and we're under 200 systems that aren't reporting. Of those 150 we can't ping, so they either have local firewalls on the box or they're not on the network. So it really is a manageable number and we do have antivirus uh, software rolled out. And we, we have some features of that software we want to continue to mature up and, and roll up, roll out. That's awesome. So you've been here three months. 90 days. Yeah. And this is the list. All right. So, you know, that's a pace that I yeah. hope we're able to continue. <laughs> so I know you've got a lot going on. I know you've actually done a lot of other stuff, too. Like, you've talked to the Muni guys about their hack, right? And, and you keep uh, dialogues with the state ISO as well as the other agency ISOs. So I appreciate all that, Carl. Yeah, it's been, uh, it's been interesting, to say the least. Are interesting. Is that security uh, speak for? <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's kind of like opportunity. Okay, all right. Same, same kind of That's word. That's the word I like to use. <laughs> well, thanks, Carl. I really, Thank you, George. I appreciate you being on the team, and I, I got to tell you, I'm so Thank you. so happy to have you here. All right, Tracy, come on up. I know I caught you say, I'm so sorry. You know, but it's the Scribner, Geisler. I knew you. I've known you for how long now? Long Almost time. 15 years? <laughs> really? Yeah. Creeping up on that, yeah. Wow. Crazy. Yeah. So, so, so good to have you. keep you on your toes. Thank you. You do, great, you do a fantastic job of that. Thank you. Thank you. You know, so. and we've got a little competition going that you're beating me on, but we, we won't talk about that. Cause I'm happy too, to share. Too, <laughs> 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 I knew you would be. That's what I love about you. <laughs> but uh, you've got some things going on in your area, too. I do. I do. There's right. always a lot going on in ITSD. Yep. And I'd, um, first, I, you know, I'm going to talk about some accomplishments that we've done and then uh, talk about a couple of items that we have in the works right now. But I really wanted to uh, do a shout out to my entire team for all the great work that they've done this past year. Um, you guys have been fabulous. I could only, I only have six minutes, so I have to keep it short. So I chose you know some of the bigger things to talk about today. First, I want to talk about staff central enhancements. You know, you all know you've all seen the shortcuts um, on um, our different web pages. We actually updated. I think it was. Um, like 80 different websites that we had to, we put these shortcuts on. Um, and, but the result of that is that we have, um, we, I can't think of the words, but um, we've done a huge improvement on unreported um, leave time. It was like 90% improvement. So that's huge for the organization. And that was a Lean Six Sigma um, effort. If you guys are ever have the opportunity to participate in that, it's um, a fabulous um, effort. Um, one of my managers, Shelly um, Chichov, she was on the team and I know she enjoyed it and the results speak for themselves on that one. The next thing I want to talk about is quick maps. Did any of you see the, uh, the uh, Caltrans news flash that we did on quick maps? So um, really the big exciting thing is that last fall, I think it was in October, we rolled out the Android application for quick maps and we already have 30,000 downloads on that one. And then on the um, iOS, which we just rolled out and that's when we did the um, news flash on, um, we already have 17,500 and I'm sure that was last week's number so maybe it's e up even higher than that. And so my goal is for all of you to download it onto your phones. If you have Android or Apple, we can help you out with that. Um, we actually submitted that for an award too, haven't we? We have. I was going to talk right. about all that. Right. Um, so next week I'm up, I'm doing a presentation. We're going to use the, the news flash as um, part of the presentation over at the Gover Governing In Innovation and Technology. Well, um, for uh, next Tuesday. So we're up for an award, we have to do a presentation, and then the audience votes. So if you all want to come over there and vote right, for perfect. us, I'm happy to you know, stack the audience, that would be right. great. Um, and along Quick Maps, you know, it's not a, a system that's out there and we're never going to change. I mean, it is ever evolving. We're talking about creating a new Quick Maps for just the trucking industry. So we'll have trucking industry specific information on there rather than the general traveling public. Um, website enhancements. Um, I'm sure all of you have noticed that um, dot.ca.gov got a um, facelift last January. Um, that was 125 plus pages that the team went through and they updated. We had we did a freeze on the whole system for a few weeks. I think it was six weeks and it made a lot of people nervous but we met the date and the outcome was really great. We continue to work with the different divisions on updating some of their pages. Um, on the intranet site, we have 85% of all of the intranet websites, they are on our standard platform, talking about standards. Um, business intelligence, I want to talk a little bit about some of the accomplishments and then that's an ongoing effort that we have going on. 
Um, we have the sponsor of that is George is one of our sponsors, but also it's maintenance, traffic ops, and a piece of DPAC that has to do with material management. They were the original sponsors for this effort. Um, but we've recently added two new sponsors. They, um, we did a bunch of educational sessions and they were so excited about it. They're like, hey, how do we, how do we get in on this? We want to be part of this. So um, we have a portion of DRISI. It's four characters, DP something or other. Can't remember that one. Um, and then the other one is um, project management um, down in Carla's area. Okay. Um, Jim Davis's area, very interested in um, participating in business intelligence. So business intelligence, you know, you hear the words, what is it? So what, we, what our effort is, is to educate everyone in Caltrans. We've started with the high levels so that they understand it. So when their staff come and say, hey, we want to do this, they have a good understanding of it. So we did a broad swath across the organization. And then in these areas, we're diving deeper. We're giving them more information. We're um, we're doing interviews, and with um, Steve's group, we've already done the interviews, and we've done the, um, the education, the as-is, and now we're looking at the to-be. So they're doing interviews and talking about the to-be. So what, is, what's it, what would that look like for your organization? And with the two new groups, they were part of the education piece, so that one's done, and now we're doing the as-is and having those conversations. We brought in, um, we have a vendor helping us with that, and they brought on more staff to be able to handle well. this. And we're, we're on time, and we're doing really good on that project. And I'm excited that I'm hearing people who were like very skeptical about the project. Um, they're really excited about it now, and they get it. So it's going to create a, um, a roadmap and a strategy for the entire organization. So other areas that didn't partake now, they can follow that, and they can implement it as well. And, and who's funding that primarily? Is that something IT is the majority sponsor on? or the No, it's actually okay. um, Steve Takagawa's area. Nice. They did the majority of it, yeah. Okay. Um, and then the next thing I want to talk about, George uh, talked about yeah. this uh, very briefly, the application inventory and rationalization, for, uh, lovingly known as the AIR project. Um, that is really around ITSD getting our arms around our inventory, all of the applications that ITSD supports. Um, so that's the initial scope. The next scope is we're going to step out to the districts and we want your help in identifying what your applications are. And then we're going to take a really big breath and we're going to look at what the business areas have out there. And we really need to know, you know, what, what applications are they running? You know, what FileMaker Pro systems do they have? What, I don't, I don't know. You know, even, even the ones that are maybe SaaS, we might be interested in those. So what this is, is we're initially looking at what is our inventory. We're getting all this very detailed information about each and every application that we have that we manage in ITSD. So we're drinking the champagne first, and then we are rationalizing those. Um, we have used Gartner, uh, they have a model out there, and so we're rationalizing those. And we're, there's a bunch of questions that we're asking, and we, our team did it first. And um, so we answered all the questions. Of course, it's from our perspective. We're also looking at the costing. How much does it cost to support each one of these applications? And I'm not just talking ITSD costs. I'm talking software maintenance, um, server storage and backup support. Um, if it's over at the data center, how much are all of those costs? And then we're putting it in a, in a tool, and it's called the time tool. And what that does is all that information that we're feeding into that, it puts it in a matrix. Um, so it's either a T for tolerate, an I for invest, an M for modify and an E for eliminate. So what we'll get out of this is we will have a roadmap of what are the applications that we really need to look at, mostly eliminating. But a step that I missed in there is that we're also, we need to rational, we need to go out to our business partners. And we're getting ready this month to go out there and start talking to our business partners. We're taking all of the applications that ITSD has and we're grouping them by organization, so we're not coming back a, a, a few times. We hit them all at once, and we're having them validate what, what our scoring was. So it's from their perspective as well as from ITSD's perspective of what's the viability of the system, how much does it cost, um, you know, there's hardware components in there and things like that. Right. So, um, and the last thing I want to talk about is e-signatures. So I'm hearing some requests, some rumblings around the need for e-signatures in the organization. And so if you hear about that, and I'm talking to everybody out there in IT, if you hear someone talking about that and that they're looking at a product or they want something, I'm going to send you the, 
I would like you to send them to Greg to do an intake because the good news is is that ITSD or IT mm -hmm. already has a, um, a product that can do e-signatures. Oh. My team's looking at it and starting to do some preliminary investigations on it. We have limited licenses at this time, but if the business need grows, we will work with the business areas to get more licenses for that. So Fantastic. like I said, my team's been busy. Yeah, we got a lot going on. You know, and I, also on the staff central, you mentioned Shelly on that? Yeah. So she actually won an award for she that did. recently, right? Yeah, she's actually she's going to get the award next week. Wow, fantastic. Yeah, oh, good, so good. very exciting about that. Yeah, that'll be a lot of fun. Thanks right. so much. Thanks, George. Appreciate it. <laughs> All right. Speaking of awards, the award-winning no. Greg Gallagher, because you're actually joining Shelly, right, in That's an award as well. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, all Thank right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Do you have your speech ready? Do you no, have, I uh, do not. I'll okay. be preparing You're, you're going to wing it right when you get up there? Speech that's, writers are on that's, it right oh, now. All right, fantastic, yeah. fantastic. All right. <laughs> What's going on in CSD? So, um, we got a few things happening right, uh, right now and a lot more, as we'll see at the end, that is being worked on. So, we'll have a lot longer list next time we do this, this okay. time next year. Um, but we are working on some project management reforms. So, we've, um, as Tracy said, yes, the intake process is still alive and well. Uh, we are modifying that a bit, um, so it's not quite to the accomplishment, but we are trying to keep it a little more nimble so um, to make sure we've got the right people in the room, we can get all the information we need in a much more quick and efficient manner. So that is still going. But some accomplishments we've had in that area is we've integrated the uh, California Project Management Framework templates. So we've branded those for Caltrans, so we've, uh, we're starting to utilize those. Um, and the other um, interesting thing was, well, interesting, but we do have 60 uh, projects, potential right. projects we are currently tracking. Just so I don't know if anybody talked about kind of how much the PMO is looking at. Those are fully executed projects we're working on, projects that are in the project approval life cycle, you know, right. the different stages yep. there, project proposals that we are um, looking at. Um, prioritizing as well as some of the intakes that might not quite make it to the level of a project too. So we get about 60 we're, we're trying to keep track of and keep moving. Well, get fantastic. Customers success. You know, and I think you. related to CMS too, there are like 16 reforms we committed to externally to our overseers and you were able to get that done this last year as well. Okay. So along the, you know, I think it was around uh, requirements, analysis and testing. So uh, that was uh, something right. that you know, CalSTA and others were very Correct, interested yeah. in making sure that so got done. So we did get, yeah, we did look at all those and yep. submit the package. You're right. Yep, so fantastic work. Thank you. Um, in the certification process, we streamlined, and I, hopefully this is something people will feel fairly quickly, including not only IT, but our customers externally, is working on um, eliminating the various levels of review, the redundancy in the review process. I'm going to give you a <laughs> so, there. So, yeah. yeah. Um, so we're sometimes down to as few as one signature. Wow. I think mostly I see one or two signatures most of the time. But That's great. So we've got those down. The last thing we're uh, taking credit for in the customer service division is the development of the IT business plan. This goes back to your roadmap. Yep. So um, we facilitated a meeting with uh, division chiefs and George to come up with some immediate steps to help implement the pyramid. So we came up with, and I think we got a graphic here. Wow. Each of the uh, um, division areas, including George, took some on as well, came up with some um, goals for the, to deliver before June 30th. So there, that's why I so say you can see a lot more accomplishments this okay. time next year. Um, so we are working with that. And this is available. So hopefully everyone watching has seen this at some point. If you haven't seen it, Talk to your manager or supervisor. They should have a copy of this. Um, we're also looking at a way of potentially um, getting some other material out that might help oh, nice. distribute this information. I actually have a wall-sized poster of this, Greg. I, you know, I, I don't remember who did this because it's really artful. Do you remember uh, who put this together? Some random guy in the <laughs> so, project. Yeah, yeah it take, looks like it was done by a consultant. To if be you liked it, I'll take credit for it. If oh, you didn't, no, I, I don't did, know. I, I love it. So, yeah, so Greg, you did do this work. Yes, and thank I, you. I think you did this in what? An hour or something? Well, it took or once, I mean, the, the process we took yeah, yeah. took a while, but to actually produce the graphic is about an hour and a half worth of work to 
put this together. That's amazing. My stick people don't look like that. A squiggly just, guy. We'll get you. We'll yeah, all right. Some nice to know. All right, I'll need some training on that. Yes, right. So. Well, thanks, Rick. I really all appreciate right. it. My so, pleasure. Thanks for all the great Thank work. Thank you very much. Yes. All right. Last but not least, Mike Winnie, you've got your uh, you've got your Caltrans tie on today. I see that's Thank nice. You. Thanks, George. Thanks for having me here today. How are you, you doing? I'm doing fantastic. Yourself? I'm doing great. Have you enjoyed your time in uh, in slow? Oh, I want to be here with D5. Can I be on a temporary assignment, maybe three or four months? You know, they got an assistant opening, so maybe you and I can, <laughs> you know, you can both apply for it, because I've actually considered it. It's such a great environment. Not it, only, you know, the, the city, but actually the, the IT team as well. It sure is, yeah. I've, I've had an opportunity to talk to Melissa and her staff, that wonderful yeah. staff down here, and, and it's been a great opportunity to be part of this. So. Thank you. All right. What's, what's going on in ITID? So we have a lot uh, of uh, good things that are going on in ITID, but I know that time is short, so I only selected a few highlights okay. that I want to brief uh, and, and update the staff. Yep. Uh, first off, um, uh, the, the IT standards. Okay. You know, since, we, um, uh, since I've been here in Caltrans, there have been a lot of um, concerns raised that, hey, we got too many flavors of technologies, too many versions of software, too many different platforms, and so on. So we sat out on a journey back in July uh, to establish IT standards for Caltrans. Okay. Uh, and that's just not for IT. That's for everyone under Caltrans, including uh, traffic management centers and so on. And more than 100 staff in IT participated in leading, participating, and adopting and vetting standards, uh, which we now have published oh, um, on our on-ramp website. Um, standards including uh, anything ranging from desktop, laptops, mobile computers, uh, tablets, uh, cell phones, um, printers, copiers, um, network devices, firewalls, routers, Excellent. switches, cabling, generators, UPSs. Wow. Um, we have them all identified uh, through this first go round. We even have things such as AutoCAD, GIS, okay. um, uh, standards that are established that we uh, partner with uh, the program people, land survey people, um, uh, construction, maintenance, yep. um, and, and we've done a very, very good job. So I just want to shout out to all of those who participated in uh, adopting these standards, vetting them, and, and supporting them. Thank you so much for the journey. It has been great. Uh, this is our first version, 1.0. I'm pretty sure that we'll do a great job you know, yep. in the years to come. Our commitment to the, the department is uh, we got to basically um, um, maintain a uh, up-to-date set of standards. So we're going to do that annually. Hopefully, the second round, is, it won't take seven months. Um, maybe it'll be a 30-day effort this time because we know who the players are. We're going to basically dish out the work and give them, you know, ample time to basically update the standards. Yeah, and you mentioned uh, 100 people, and on that document is a list of all the folks that contributed. That, that also includes program area folks, right? There's a lot of program area folks. No, so. that's just IT people. Oh, really? So in addition to IT people, we have um, uh, various programs, mm -hmm. including maintenance, construction, land survey, engineering. Um, they all basically chipped in okay. and vetted the, the standards. So this standard is not something that we've done in a, a silo approach. Yep. It was very well vetted mm -hmm. throughout the department, yep. including uh, TMC engineers and so on. Excellent. Yeah. Well, thanks. Yeah. So uh, in addition to the IT hardware standards, I like to uh, give a quick update on what we're doing with our IT hardware uh, um, uh, refresh. So you know, last summer we started out on a journey doing uh, a BCP, a budget exchange proposal, to uh, gain some funding to uh, update our IT uh, hardware infrastructure. And as you know, finance uh, um, uh, approved our request for one year for $12 million. Uh, at this point, um, you know, we've been joking about this, that we haven't made a touchdown yet. Yeah, we're close. We're close. You know, we're for close. those who are uh, football fans, we're at the two-yard line, and we're about to punch it in to make six points. See, I, um, I would have said uh, one-yard line. That would have put you ahead of security, <laughs> right? <You know? laughs> we work very well with security, so, you know, I'll give them that, okay, right? right? It's a partnership. So what we've been doing is, um, you know, we ask for the money. Now the work begins. We've been busy uh, in answering questions to the uh, LAO office, the analysts. Um, they, won't, they have had follow-up questions, and our team had to basically uh, respond to those questions. 
in terms of the, the criticality of the equipment, uh, various levels of criticality that we have assessed and categorized, um, as well as uh, Senate budget staff. You know, they have basically asked for alternative um, information, alternative um, analysis, other options that we looked at uh, for the BCP that we did not recommend. So we had to provide the schedule and various information that they requested. But more importantly, um, our staff have been very, very busy working with district IT staff in vetting uh, and validating the inventory, right? The routers, the switches, uh, the servers, and then storage appliances that we have identified to be part of the scope to make sure that they are what they are and it's accurate information. In addition to that, we have been um, developing what I call a procurement plan. What are we buying? How many we're buying? Where are they going to? When are we buying them? And so on. But more importantly, we also dig deep in um, developing what we call a deployment plan. Where are these devices going? Who's getting them? What's going to be our strategy for replacing O and H equipment in a timely manner that we have told finance, right? We're basically are going to be given a 12 months period to replace all of these things. And we want to make sure that we have a strategic as well as a tactical set of plans so that we can go and do these in a most effective way. Yes. Last but not least, VoIP, telephony over the internet. Uh, it's something that is not new in the industry. It's been around for a long, long time, but it's, it is new to Caltrans. You know, we've been piloting in four district offices, um, three, nine, uh, no, three, six, 11, and 12. They have been um, very successful. And where we are right now is we're getting ready to de uh, deploy about 5,000 units uh, in Sacramento, uh, at headquarters and the Farmers Market Plaza. Uh, that is to be completed by June 30th, um, uh, this fiscal year. Uh, that is our target date to complete. We're going to do our best to make sure that our users will have the best experience. Um, but in addition to that, I want to share with everyone that um, we have asked AT&T to work very closely with all the IT district managers in all districts to do um, a couple of things. Um, assess and certify that the cabling is ready for VoIP, which is CAT 5E and above. And the other one is to make sure that we have adequate electrical capacity as well as multiple circuits for redundancy purposes in our data closets so that these uh, PoE enable access layer switches, when they are coming in, they will be ready to be plugged in so that handsets would be ready to uh, get the power and be deployed with uh, VoIP phone sets. So um, AT&T will be working with me. Uh, well, actually, we have a scheduled conference call for them to share with us in terms of the assessment schedule for all the district offices up and down the state tomorrow. And um, as soon as I receive that information and get their vice president's approval, I will share it with all of the IT district managers. OK? All right. Thanks, all right. Mike. Thanks, Thanks for your <laughs> I think that takes us. That takes us to uh, the part of the segment where we receive some questions ahead of time uh, that we're going to start addressing. And uh, again, it's still open, and I think we're starting to receive questions, and uh, we'll be going through those. I don't think we're going to have the time to answer all of them, but certainly we'll try to get to some of them. On the first one, uh, there's a question around our strategic goals, and that gets back to uh, the pyramid that we saw earlier, and the question was around, well, you know, what's the cost of implementing, right, our strategic goals, and you know, the total cost, the individual cost? And uh, for some of these efforts, like BI, that are kind of more fully formed and rolling down, uh, we know that that's about 900 grand. Most of it is paid uh, out of the program areas. But other things that are just starting to form, especially on the transform piece, like ITS, you know, we're just starting to collaborate uh, with the program areas, the TMCs, et cetera. And so we don't necessarily have uh, costs on those things. Um, so it's a, it's a mixed bag, right, uh, is kind of my message. We're going to continue to formulate and refine those as, as we get deeper into ITS, we get deeper into all of those things. And I think Tracy's AIR project will actually give us a good perspective on some of our technology costs, which is also one of our goals. Uh, the next question, actually, uh, Melissa, you know Windows 10? Can you handle that one? Sure. Windows 10, the first thing I wanted to share about Windows 10 is that um, we've been in 
uh, communications regarding Windows 10 with the executive staff. Windows 10 is not going to be a project. The effort um, to be to roll out to Windows 10 will be through refresh. And so starting with IT, and I love the analogy that you guys say, we drink the champagne Papers, first. Yep. So we, many of us have received the equipment already. Um, if you haven't, it's, it should be coming. Uh, go ahead and install Windows 10. Get to know it, learn it, um, get familiar with it. And we also uh, will be having, there'll be some courses available on CBT Nuggets and lynda.com, which should help in that, um, that effort. Um, so for right now, we're rolling it out for IT. However, we're also receiving equipment for the programs. We're not yet ready to start rolling it out to the programs. They're doing some testing for software compatibility. And so we're looking at a target date of somewhere in July as far as that goes. So. All right. Well, thanks for that update. And I, and I really thank you for answering that because you literally got that question last night. You know, as we we're looking at those, are, who's taking Windows 10? So thank you for volunteering oh, for that. Welcome. I appreciate that. All right, hand-me-down hardware. So, Mike, Mike, what is that? Hand-me-down hardware. Do you got some hand-me-down clothes? Is that hand-me-down hand <laughs> shoes? Know, or, uh, you know, know this phone, this phone, that's oh, him, oh, you know. That's hand-me-down hardware? Toss earlier, so if it's still working. Money, is that is, if it's still working, you're and some, some have some life left, and some basically um, pass end of life. Oh, man. Uh, some programs decide, you know, often they say, hey, you know, can you replace this? you know, old equipment, oh, yeah, yeah. with some new equipment, and yep. then take this and trickle it down, you know, to some other staff. That's what Hand Me Down is all about, right? Reusing it, handing it down to, you know, other people that have a need for it. In my household, I get the Hand Me Down phone from my son, so that's that's the pecking order. He gets in, the new stuff. In my household, yeah. the Hand Me Down is the car, right? Oh, okay, all right. I drive the oldest one, right? Uh, all right. Oh, well, we're still <laughs> okay, uh, all right. I knew Mercedes right <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. So, so anyway, um, you know, staff and managers have basically approached myself and you about this topic. And from, from my personal perspective and our executive perspective, uh, and the hand-me-down you know, effect um, is something that we want to avoid, right? Um, recently, we had some conversation with dis District 3 office. Yep. You know, some of the program managers, due to financial constraints, wanted to do the hand-me-down to their staff. And um, Suzanne basically got me involved in sitting down with a program manager to explain to them that, hey, we have limited resources, right, staff resources, and they have a lot of important things to do to support the business programs. And we want them to do just that. Doing the hand-me-down um, is really doubling the work, right, bringing in the new equipment for staff. And then we have to re-image the old equipment and then hand it down to another set of staff. We don't feel that is really the best use of time. And when we explained that to the business programs uh, management, um, they were very receptive to that. They did not understand that fully until we took the time to explain that to them. So it sounds like having that conversation is really important, right? It you is. It is a partnership, right? communication, yep. communication, and sitting down with them to explain that uh, really uh, helped them out. So um, our perspective is we want to support IT managers and staff to avoid the hand-me-down effect as much as possible. Of course, from time to time, there are exceptions, and we basically have to take those, those into consideration. Got it. Okay. Well, thanks, Mike. I appreciate All right. it. All right. Thanks, George. All right. Promotional opportunities. I think that's you, Greg. And, you know, are you yeah. telling me the assistant opening is going to be promoted so Mike and I can apply and yeah, I, I we can afford rent? To All right. Thank I just you, know right. it's a very, you know, objective process well, to go through. Are. So make right, sure, yeah. Absolutely. So this was a good question um, we got about what's it take to get promoted within IT. I'm paraphrasing a bit. Um, that got us asking about some questions. Well, what is the status right now of promotions within IT? So in the calendar year 2016, we had 80, we filled 87 positions in calendar year uh, 2016. Of those, we 28 of those positions were filled through a promotion, an internal promotion. A Caltrans IT employee received a promotion. So um, they, they are happening, for those that are wondering. Um, and, so that's... And is that uh, indicator, is, is that getting better or worse, you know, compared to prior years? It's, to be honest, about the same. Our number of um, positions that we filled jumped quite a bit in okay. the 2016, since you've been here, quite Got frankly. Um, 
And um, but I, I didn't when pay we great looked, for that, by the way. Yeah, by the way. So, <laughs> um, but when we looked at that, uh, it looked about the same percentage, okay, or roughly. Right. So the sample size is a lot different. Got it. Um, and then we were wondering if there's an impact. Uh, just anecdotally, our attrition rate was 7.5 okay. percent. So that's not bad. Um, you know, some of those were promotions to outside yep. agencies. A lot were retirements. So okay. we tried to look at the stats. So my advice on promotional opportunities um, you know there it is competitive it's very you know the hiring managers need to keep it as objective as possible so scoring um, screening criteria all done ahead of time so it's not they don't wait to see who's applied and then figure it out so it's done ahead of time when they submit their hiring packages um, one thing I want to emphasize for anybody looking to promote it's not solely based upon your performance at your current level or in the past, right? That, that could be part of it. That's part of the skills you, you learn. But it's basically going to be looking at the candidate's ability to perform in the position they're applying for. So some stuff just to keep in mind that goes into that, uh, besides skills, knowledge, and abilities, education can come in, um, work experience. Uh, there's character issues, you know, ability to work as a team and, and kind of fit in with the team on that. Uh, one area I would encourage all the employees to do is the individual development plans, IDPs. They're supposed to be done and we're, yeah, some managers look around. I think we're all looking in the mirror right now. They're supposed to be done annually. They can be done more often. So if you're out there, you're an employee, you haven't had an IDP in a while, tell your manager you want an IDP. Tell them about what your uh, career goals are so that can be incorporated into your IDP. So that would be my um, advice for that. And the one thing um, that George was bringing up just the other day, just yesterday actually, was literally the, literally the other the day, other day uh, you know, the, the executive team here is committed to making sure that we have the right classifications to meet our mission and our goals. So um, George mentioned that he is committed to submitting a concept BCP to look at and try to get the right mix of the salaries and the classifications. Now that's not, doesn't mean it's a done deal and I'm sure George could jump in here at any time yeah, here. We're, we're actually on the other two yard line. Yeah, right? yeah, <laughs> along with, with the hardware and software, <laughs> the hardware and security BCPs, right? We're just starting that journey. Yes. I gotta tell you, the hardware and security ones were really difficult to get off the ground. It required support not only internally, it required support from agency, Right and uh, some overseers. So, in those situations, we we're only we asked for 60 mil on the hardware side, and we only ended up uh, getting one year. Right, 12 12 mil. Uh, this will be an ongoing cost. So, you know, in my mind, that means it's an even tougher journey. But right. we are definitely supportive of this, and it, it makes Which is sense. Great news, yeah. Yep. So, thank you very much. Okay. You bet. All right. Thanks, Greg. Right. Appreciate it. And. Let and lastly, job rotation. Is, it seems like it's really similar to promotional opportunities. Can you, we had a yes. question about job rotation and, you know, are we going to do that? Is, is that really happening now? And yeah. So a uh, question came in from one of our employees yeah. regarding job rotation. Do we do job rotation? Would we consider it? And the answer is absolutely yes. Um, we've actually been doing job rotation. Okay. Um, right. We've done it a lot with management um, as positions become vacant um, and we need somebody to fill that position. You know, Greg's a great example. He came down here to District uh, 5 and um, I got to get my numbers straight. I know, I know. I, I know. You're on the road so much, right? I, 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 hello. There we go, D5. Yes, there's my cue right, over there. Right here too. Yeah. <laughs> I, don't, I don't want to say anything. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, George. Yeah, yeah, I appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> anyway, so, so um, George, uh, Greg came down here and did District 5. I know we've had um, some people filling in, and they were um, not management positions, but they were staff level um, people who stepped up into a supervisory or a managerial position, and they did the job for the required amount of time, yep. or the most amount of time that they could. So we we're giving them opportunities. So you're like, well, how do I get that, right? Well, my advice to you would be um, be that exemplary employee. You know, have a good relationship with your manager because, you know, first you got to talk to them. If you're interested, let's say you're working in networks um, and you want to go over to the server team, you know, have a conversation with your manager, then have a conversation with maybe Fred or one of his managers. Talk about, well, what are you looking for in that? But 
it really starts with you as an employee and being exemplary, being that person who's the go-to person, who um, is achievement-oriented, um, gets things done. And if you're a superstar in your area, I think that there's a more likely opportunity for you to do some sort of a job rotation or even take a part of your time, say 20 or 30 percent of your time, and go work in Fred's group and get some hands-on experience and learn that. Um, but really, you have to be exemplary in your current role to be able to really be considered for that. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate that overview. I think that's important for all of us, right? You know, no matter it's it's our staff or even ourselves, yep. right? To to build those relationships and, and really do all that you can. I'm glad you mentioned Fred because I mentioned Shelley earlier. Yeah. I mentioned Gray, but I forgot to mention that Fred's also getting an award this year. I think Academy. you should bring him up here. Oh, gee, let's bring our Fred. Yeah. Come on, since you're here, Fred. Yeah, you. Just take a bow, Fred. Come on. Well, Folks hear your voice all the time, right? But yeah, they really sure don't they know can, what you look like. Now, I'm sure they can hear me laughing back there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> now that they've seen you, they're probably happy with the phone. No. <laughs> yes. Well, well congratulations, well, too. Well, thank you. Thank oh, you. Actually, you know, I, I, the only thing I'd want to add to that is, you know, if it wasn't for my yeah. team and the support of my yeah. executive management yeah. support team, you know, that, that award probably would have never came to fruition. Oh. But, you know, it's all one IT and my team, my, my support management executives, yeah. without it, without them, Probably would have never came. All right, thanks for that. I'm uh, grateful, so right. thank you. Okay. You bet. All right. Let me get this. All right. No, All right. We, we never know. We'll see. We'll see. We can have another question for you. Uh, I don't, how much time do we have? Uh, are we good for a couple of questions? All right. Two minutes? All right. So I don't know if there's any. I want to give the D5 folks a shot first. Do you guys have any questions before we go to some of the other? I have a question for you. Okay. Um, you were just talking about IT positions. Yep. Um, All right, we're, I think we're going to make you come up. Come on, you got to get on camera. You're not shy. Do you have any information for us about the, the IT reclassifications that's been mentioned? Great question, and that comes up periodically. I, I got to tell you, there's uh, three IT kind of reclassification efforts uh, that I'm aware of. And, uh, you know, for one reason or the other, they all kind of stalled out individually. Uh, and the most recent one that I recall was uh, about four or five years ago that had to get some traction and we were looking at kind of um, aggregating all our various classifications down to about six or so, six deep classes, right? Which would give our folks a lot of room to move up and down. It, didn't, it wasn't classified by ISA or PA or triple S, right? It was more a functional type of, of layout and it was a very deep class. Uh, now fortunately that didn't happen. You know, and as I talked to folks, at CalHR and other places, I think it requires a certain amount of funding. And so those other efforts didn't get funded enough uh, to cross the finish line. They probably got to the, the I'm going to stay on the football theme, they, they probably got to the 20-yard line, right, and they were in the red zone, right, but they just didn't get enough funding uh, to, to yeah, fumble. <laughs> I don't know if you guys heard that off camera, but yeah, good, that's a good one. They fumbled, right, so they couldn't bring it home. But some of those classifications are from the 70s, right? They're probably older than a lot of you guys in this room, quite honestly. <laughs> so I'm hopeful uh, with the new director at CalHR, Richard Gillahan, who happens to be an IT guy, right, who happens to understand it, that uh, he'll be able to find the funding and then find all the partners to push that through. But great question. Thank you. All right, uh, time for one more or? Okay. A question from the email. If it's a hard one, I'm going to give it to these guys. <laughs> <laughs> are, there, are there plans to bring back the IT newsletter? The IT newsletter. You know, uh, I talked about the cadence on communication. That is something that we're looking at. I know that Tracy actually got one out on the security side. Yes. Right, for Cybersecurity Month. Was that May? No, that was October. October. Wow. Wow. Where's the time go? I think that's a great idea. I would love to look at that. And I'm looking at Greg Gallagher from our MSO <laughs> team. Um, you know, if we can follow up with that, I'd love to know what you folks want to hear about. You know, we do meet quarterly, but if there's stuff you want to hear about, let's start well, getting a team together. And that's an excellent thing to crowdsource. So, Greg, as we look at that, mm -hmm. if you can put something out and, uh, and seek volunteers. I've done it in the past. Yeah, have you have done it in the past? Yeah. All right. When's the last time? Keep, come on up, Greg. Oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> So we've done that in the past. Can you tell us more about that? Um, yeah, yeah it's, it was, I believe we called it, it's, it's news to me. I it's think we to had, us right? uh, when I was the ombudsman. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so we published, I think we maybe only had about six before, okay. you know, things changed and all. Okay. 
Um, so we also had one that was for all of uh, Caltrans employees, and we also had an internal one just for yeah. IT employees. Okay. Um, which I forgot the clever name we had for that. IT Connection, I think. That IT one Connect. Was. I might All be right. getting them mixed up. Somebody's probably yelling at the screen right now saying, no. <laughs> Craig, anyway. I worked on that. Yeah. So, um, yeah, we can, okay, perfect. we can look at that, and it's a great idea to hear what people want to hear in those. Yeah, I think so, right? Uh, because uh, communication is so fundamental, and we're so distributed up and down the state. Yes. I think we really do need to yep. work on that. So thank you. I appreciate right. I appreciate the commitment. You hear, I'm going to seal it with a handshake, so thank All you. Right. Hey, one more thing to add to the pile. All right, there's, there's emails coming out there, so. <laughs> <laughs> so you're going to share the wealth on that. And closing, I really do want to thank uh, D5 for all the hospitality. Melissa, really, for coming up and, and speaking a couple times and sharing a little bit about yourself and answering the Windows 10 question. And I got to tell you, if you guys get a chance to get down here, the D5 crew is uh, really hospitable. I know I've had a couple of great meals here, right? And uh, not only that, but a lot of laughs and a lot of great questions and engagement. So come on down if you get the chance. Thank you. Oh, oh. oh. Next stop. Oh, next stop, I'm sorry. Next stop is Bishop, one of our biggest districts. So, <laughs> some people actually think it's Nevada. You know, I'm going to do <laughs> We're actually going to prove that true or, or untrue. So, I think when we go down there, we may end up having more folks uh, visit district that's, than is in district. Does, does, <laughs> that's a good point. Does, yeah. does Cooper know we're coming or so you're learning that right now? He knows. All right, darn it. I wanted to surprise him. But uh, we'll do Bishop next time. It's actually a badge of honor in my uh, terms because as I've talked to folks, a lot of old, old time Caltrans executives haven't been to Bishop. So looking forward to that trip. So thank you very much. I appreciate your time and we look forward to you at the next quarterly. <laughs>